saying that they saw the envelope being loaded with the documents and it was sealed in front of them. Then you take it to the mail. See, this this avoids a lot of these problems with notaries that they won't put their name on a notary presentment, you know. We had well, problems. it might be because they really are, you know, now they just don't include that in their training. They don't know who they are as a notary. They right. don't do their own due diligence to seek the the real truth and the real um, standing of that oath that they take. Right. Um, and there are a few, I mean, uh, handfuls around the around the country that do know um, their authority as a notary. And uh, therefore, it's pretty powerful if you do know someone that uh, knows how to use those processes and, right. and do it correctly. Because they won't stand for um, uh, no answer or trying to push the time out farther than what you've given them. For example, if you give them 30 or 30 days to respond and uh, they don't, and they send a little letter that says, you know, we need this to be extended for 15 more days. Well, you know, that wasn't, you know, that wasn't agreed upon. The notary presenter does not have to tolerate that, and they can go ahead and send it to send the notice, first notice of default. Right. And so anyway, I just thought I would, you know, put put that in there. I mean, I know that um, still the notary is possibly the liaison. Maybe Greg knows a little bit more. I could add a little bit to this uh, in a little bit um, to to that system. In other words, from the living to that, you know, to those entities. Right. Uh, to have them prove their claim. Um, so okay. I'm going to unmute Greg and... Um, Wait a minute. I'm I, not done. I know, I know. <laughs> um, I have four I, more questions i got to answer, and then... No, 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 I realize that. So let me um, repeat the questions from the chat. Okay. And then uh, I do have Greg unmuted, so if there's something Greg wants to add as we kind of come conclude the question uh, that's being presented, then that would be helpful, too, if Greg has anything at all. But anyway, um, the, uh, the, Austra the question about Australia, from Australia, right? Right. Uh, do you know if this, uh, these documents will work in Australia? And, um, okay. the, docu the main document, the Respatilla, was... Um, written around the United States um, codes and acts that Congress had passed. They, it would probably work if you can find the equivalent in Australia or New Zealand or Canada. But these documents were specifically written around U.S. law. Sorry yeah. about that. But the, the steps will work. It's just that what's the content of the letter, it has to be um, updated to your country. Yes, you've got to have the pretty pretty much the um, the codes that would follow along the same uh, um, respatilla um, statutes and codes, so to speak, that we have to use here. Um, all right. So next question: Is it applicable applicable for Canada, which basically is almost the same? And what if you are not in foreclosure but still would like to merge the legal and beneficial title. Yes. This package is used to actually rid the bank, rid the uh, the title company of any ownership in your land. And that's what that's what you're trying to do is get it down to the uh to the point where you can do the reconveyance into your own name. Um, it, it is suggested to actually do it before you get behind in payments because it's easier to deal with them. Right. It's, it's much easier to handle the situation and get it conveyed without causing a situation because uh, from what I was reading re just recently, um, it, there really cannot be uh, any kind of alternate claims or or, or uh, alter egos going on before a conveyance that you would really be intending to do correctly, um, but they look at that as uh, unclean hands from what I've witnessed. So you, it's very, you know, it's a very uh, 
precise timing that works way better than actually getting into a, a pickle with, you know, you're already in uh, in really deep with the foreclosure right. process. Yeah. See, remember what Frank said, if you if you miss two payments or three payments, you're in the rears, and yeah. then they call you, then they declare you a delinquent uh, tenant. Huh? That's really hard to overcome. Yeah. Yep. So it's right. better if you start off yeah. on the right foot. It's, 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 yeah, you see better results, and you get to uh, you put them in you put them in the into a situation of them having to prove any kind of claim, and if they cannot, then it's it's as if the um, the document that you were forced under um, without full disclosure are fraudulent. So if you're doing that right off the bat before you're getting in arrears, you've got way, uh, you know, much better standing. Right. So, all right. So next question from Truth Seeker is um, Ron. I I can't Ron. answer that. That's uh, off topic. Kind of off topic. Okay. Yeah, read it. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Let's see. Let me check the phone lines real quick. Star eight. Anyone on the phone lines? If you have a question for Ron on the uh, what we just covered. Um, and remember, we're not covering covering any specifics on any specific case. Um, we are covering some really good topics and sharing some information with folks. Um, and again, we're not here to give any kind of legal advice. Um, we just want to help folks get educated, um, take what what has been discovered and the information put together, and see how it works uh, and work for you. And again, for Canada and Australia, um, if you have some folks that are fairly fairly familiar with these types of processes, it won't take them long to put documents together that will work in your areas. So. Um, okay, let's see. We have a better way. Ron, uh, got a question from a better way? Okay. Hi, Terry and Ron. Hi. Hi. This is Iris. I have a question um, concerning the foreclosure package. Okay. Would you suggest um, that a person starts at their current servicer or lender? Because, you know, if a person has, like, been in a home for many years they may have had um, several servicers through transfers or um, refinancing or whatever. Right. So would you suggest sending these papers to the current service or would you start from the beginning of when you initially got your, um, your, your like, let's say, um, your, your mortgage? No, no, it would be the current servicer. Okay, okay. And then I would suggest going down to the county recorder and doing a um, a trace on the ownership of the property to find out who really owns it and who the real servicer is. See, they're supposed to change. They're supposed to update their their records, and sometimes they don't even do that. Right. Okay. Well, that's just that's good good to do anyway. You know. Okay. Okay, but the documents I've, you know, I've just um, opened them up recently, so they're very thorough, and that's the first. Well, I've, I've actually done a package before, and I didn't have all the details of how to do it, so I really appreciate the detailed information that you've, that you've shared. Good. Thank you. Um, oh. It took me about four days to put the, put the thing together. Okay. Very good. Okay, well, thank you. That's my question. You're yeah. welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Iris. All right, we're, these are some, uh, a couple of good notes here. Um we have a, a reminder here about uh, the disclosure. Um, if you want to continue on that, uh, asking for full disclosure, it is very important to include the generally accepted accounting practices um, and full accounting of those when you are making those requests and the FOIA uh, requests. So the, there's, there are things that they must be answered. So. Um, right. So the, the, the rest of the letter alone, I think it's 18 pages. I mean, it's mm -hmm. very detailed. Yeah. Very detailed. And it asks for everything. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so a uh, question from um, 
the chat here. Uh, for a business line of credit installment loan where a home or farmland is the collateral, this mm. package applies the same as a mortgage? Uh, I think I, if I remember right, that would be like an equity line of of a loan, equity line loan. But they mm -hmm. they mortgage the the. It would be like a second or third mortgage on the home. So I don't know if if Respatilla falls under that particular lending practice. Mm. You know what I'm saying, Terry? Yeah. Yep. Yep. It. Kind of a yeah that that would be that would be questionable on that one. Well, we've got some phone line questions ready to go to a couple of those. Okay. All right. We have uh, legal grounds. You're ready. Are you there? Yes, I am. I have a question about notarization in another state. Whenever they are seeking to commit fraud and take it out of state and recreate the origination of the loan. We have lenders who are doing this. Oh, yeah. We have, we have uh, notary fraud in possibly four states. It's a massive identity theft. Mm -hmm. And four properties, three properties have been taken. We have a loan investigation. We have proof that the mortgage note and deed of trust have been separated in the securitization process and that it is uh, Regions Bank masquerading as a lender when they're actually nothing but a table-funded loan that has been securitized through multiple parties, and there's no way these properties can be lawfully foreclosed, and we have been at this for years. And I've done a lot of the paperwork, and, and I am, I've got a warehouse full of paperwork. Oh, I know. And green cards, and like you say, they do not go away ever. Nope. And now they have moved into bringing in a real estate agent and allowing her to misuse and abuse the cyberstalking law and taking it into a whole new genre that does not have anything to do with foreclosures, but it's basically using the cyberstalking law as a gag order to stop me the power of attorney, in fact, for my mother, who is soon to be 88 years old, she has been evicted four times since 2008. December 2nd was the first foreclosure, alleged foreclosure hearing. It is a mock kangaroo court. Everything is set in place and done with a sale date and the advertising dates all set in place, as they always are. It is lender take all. Now, how do we stop the movement of these properties? I spoke with the clerk of court today. He's quite cocky, and he's quite sure that they have a title. I said, how did they get it? They do not show proper ownership. The man in the first property loss cannot sell the property. He has already had the property surveyed and a resurvey of the old survey. They've altered the meets and bounds. They can't sell the property, and now he has his son living in it because he can't sell it, and they have ignored everything that we have done to ask them to produce the note. Um, the clerk of court says it does not pertain to the state of North Carolina, and it does. It pertains to all 50 states. He is basically obstructing justice and not allowing us to have the proper time to file a lawsuit to force them to produce the note. Everyone is being shielded from prosecution, and the origination of the, the note has now been recreated by the substitute trustee stating that my mother, at age 82, individually did this when there was a bogus, invalid power of attorney in fact in charge. It was all done third party in a fraud, and we personally... <laughs> We went downstairs during a break, during one of the hearings, and got the original documentation that was a notarized document done on the 23rd of December oh. in 2004, showing how it was done and who did it. Now, they had the proper... Can I, can I interrupt you, please? Sure. <laughs> 
we don't have time for this long story. There, there 